Hello, this is Mike Leiber from Northern Kentucky University, and welcome to our 3DS Max series for Paper Vision 3D. Now, we just finished one of those ominous cycles of creative destruction, and we're actually getting ready for the next cycle. So, uh, if you don't know what the heck I mean by creative destruction, go to my Globalization of Higher Ed Part 1 on YouTube and take a look at that. Uh, you really don't need to watch, that's probably the most boring uh, video I have on the web. Basically, all you need to know is product development life cycles are dropping dramatically due to globalization. And it takes an aggressive development posture to remain competitive, and we're constantly uh, upgrading and becoming lifelong learners. Um, the changes I saw in technology 10 years ago, which happened about every two and three years, are now happening every two and three months. So if you're going to remain competitive in the business, you've got to continually update and develop. And So that moves us fully into 3D, so especially with the Flash Gen Player, which has incorporated Paper Vision directly into the player. Uh, we have developed a new flat file system we're going to be very proud to show you over the next few weeks. And we have something called hyper-closed captioning, which not only brings forth text, but images and 3D models. And, of course, we're always using blending technology to develop new pedagogies and approaches of using the technology that we have. Of course, our group has a task of producing the next generation web course, and we have modeled that after a 3D RPG. Uh, this series is for our developers in-house and for our faculty members. And what we'll be doing here, 3D Max series for Paper Vision 3D, is building with primitives, box modeling, working with materials and UVW, architectural modeling using bipeds, lathing extruding, path modeling, and using NURBS. Now just real quick about 3DS Max, one of the two important topics is lighting and materials. And we're going to address those two topics as we move through this series. And in Paper Vision 3D, definitely optimization and counting. So in the old days of graphics, we were counting bits and trying to get the bits down as much as possible. And these days, we're still counting bits, but we're also counting polygons. Anything to bring down that CPU cycle. Now we're going to start in this first part of building with primitives, the second lifestyle. And the reason I say the second lifestyle, if you've had any experience with second life, everything is built in primitives. So our first structure, we're going to just build completely in primitives and show you and show you how to do that. Now my assumption here is that you've gone through the 3DS Max Essential Skills Movies. Now where is that? Well, whenever you open up 3DS Max, there up comes the Essential Skills Movies, which address using the interface, viewport navigation, creating objects, transforming objects, modifying objects, materials, and animations. And if you've gone through those movies, and they're short, maybe one minute, two minute videos, if you've gone through those and played around 3DS Max a little bit, you're definitely ready to start here. Let me say a little bit about 3D packages. Now, over the years, I've worked with a number of uh, packages, 3DS Max, LightWave, Maya, Blender. And for me, I found 3DS Max just to be the most intuitive and easy to use. And you may have another preference, and that's OK. But we will be addressing 3DS Max in this series. There's another 3D package, which is kind of in its own category, and that's Swift 3D. And Swift 3D is basically built for Flash. And it's built by Electric Rain. And this year, Electric Rain jumped completely into head first Paper Vision 3D, and if they continue with their development and they add UV mapping, then they're going to be ahead of the game and certainly the product to use. So we'll be showing uh, the use of Swift 3D in this series as well. So let me give you an overview of what we're going to cover in this uh, building with primitives. We're going to talk about the importance of shortcut keys and building with speed. We're going to build a simple column and going to show you rotational cloning. Then we're going to use Swift 3D to bring that into Paper Vision and talk about some of the problems with uh, Swift 3D as far as optimization and lighting and mapping. Now, real quick here, too, I have this labeled as part F, and it's an F if you don't do this. Beware. 3DS Max crashes, so you need to save often. And you need to use incremental saving, because when it crashes, sometimes it corrupts the version. So if your version has been corrupted and you c you've been saving over and over again the same name, you're going to lose everything. So remember, it's very easy in 3DS Max to incrementally save. So use that feature. So if you don't do it, just remember, you get an F. So I'm in 3DS Max right here, and you can see my three orthographic screens. And here's my perspective screen. And I have my little Create button, and when I hit Create, I go down here to my primitives. And you see I have a number of primitives here, a box, cone, sphere, cylinder, and a number of other uh, primitives to build with. If I come along here and click, for example, on a sphere, I can just drag it out to stage, and there's my sphere. So that's how easy it is. And notice I didn't build into perspective view. I actually dropped that into top view. And you can find many times that I'm going to be actually working with the top uh, 
front and left views to build with and then later on I may do some perspective building now perspective building can be dangerous depending on what you're working with and you get all out of whack and you don't really know uh, specifically what you're working with unless you're in one of these other orthographic views however there's certain instances where it's fairly easy to work with the perspective view and build in that view uh, what I want to do here now is just go ahead and hit control A and just hit the delete key so remove everything from the screen I want to briefly discuss the concept of gizmos. Now gizmos is a device that actually appear in Second Life as well. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on a sphere and just draw that in the perspective view. That's what we have open right now. And that'll be good enough to talk about gizmos. So if I come along here and I click on the translation button or hit uh, W for example, I can see these three uh, arrows appear and they're color coded. Roy G. Bibb and we have red, blue, and green. And these actually translate in the uh, Y direction red is for the X direction, Z is the blue direction and uh, that's exactly what they're called, they're just called gizmos and so if you do the same thing for rotation you get a rotation gizmo and you can see once again you're rotating around um, the X axis the Y axis and the Z axis and these, uh, these tools are really handy, I love them to death, especially in Second Life and uh, they're just called <laughs> gizmos and you'll see these gizmos in other things as well once again if you hit uh, to stretch uh, or for uh, sizing and you can hit the uh, R key as well you can see once you also get gizmos as well and see I can stretch and expand my object any way I want or I can expand it by hitting the center uh, all at once or one of the axes just by a certain size. So this is also a very useful tool. Just be aware of these tools. You need them in order to make the uh, action happen. Now, you may accidentally hit the X key and your gizmo will disappear. Just remember if you've done that and you can't find your gizmos, you may fall asleep one day and accidentally hit it, uh, just hit the X key again and your gizmos come back. So, And that's just a short tutorial on gizmos and I love them. Now, definitely in this business there is a need for speed and your success is going to be basically built upon your efficiency what a great artist you are and how fast you can build now I encourage the use of shortcut keys and that means you're it's the one two hand combination you're using the left hand as the shortcut key getter and the right hand is basically using the mouse and pressing on that middle wheel now I've already talked about the four views but let me give you some uh, shortcuts already off the bat P stands for the perspective, L for the left, T for the top, and F for the front. What does that mean? Well, if I can go to any view, let's start with the top view, and I can type in F, T, or P. So I'm switching my perspective. So let's go back to T. So if in the perspective view, I can change it to interview, any view I want. So I may decide, hey, I want to do something real quick, not slide up to the uh, upper screen, and just do it in one screen, and I can just do that by basically pressing on those keys. So now that we've covered that, let's build our column. And we're going to do it what I've called second lifestyle. We're basically building with primitives. We're going to use a cube, a torus, and a cylinder. I'm going to show you how to use the align tool, how to use the shift clone tool, and a number of keyboard shortcuts which are very important. Q for the pointer, W for translate, E for rotation, R for scaling, Z for zoom extends, Alt W to viewport toggle, and right click magic. So basically if you've done something and you don't like the way it looks, if you haven't let go of your mouse yet, you can right click and return you back to where you started. So with that, let's go ahead and build our column. Our column's going to need a base, so we're going to go here to create and hit on primitives and grab a box and we'll start with the top view and we'll build a box and we'll extend it a little bit. Great. It's not centered yet, but we're going to center it up in a moment. And on top of that box, that's going to be our base, and we're going to put a torus, and then stick the cylinder into that torus. So let's come along here and go to the center of our box, or somewhere in there, and create a torus. That's the first radius, there's the second radius, and let go. And we can see it definitely is not um, aligned in any way. So I'm going to hit Alt-W, basically, to expand the screen so we can see it a little bit better. I'm going to hit Q to get my uh, selection tool and marquee around the two items. Now that I've selected the two items, I want to go to the Align tool, click on that, and I want to click on Align, and I can choose uh, what I want to align. And you can see as I check box these things move around. Of course, I don't want to align Z, I want to align X and Y. Hit Apply, and now I have an alignment, and hit OK. 
Let's cut Alt W and see how everything looks. And we can see that my cylinder is still too low, or my torus is too low, so I'm going to actually Alt W again in this uh, orthographic perspective. Let's see if I can select that uh, uh, torus. Let's hit W for translation and let's move it up. There we go, and that's where we want it. And let's go Alt W to go back to my perspective, or back to my views.